Okay, so this is kind of a quick part two to my little tutorial on if, true, false. <laughs> so we've been using some if statements and we've been um, using a Boolean to see whether or not it's true or false. And we're in essence doing kind of a true or false comparison inside the if statement, right? So if, true, false, these are all together. And uh, last time we left off, we had a little animation where a, uh, a circle would grow and shrink and grow and it goes back and forth. So um, this is fine, right? And I think right at the end um, of the previous tutorial, I had shown how we could have an if statement that said if d equals to 400, then we can make grow equal false. And if it got to the, and then we can have a separate if statement that said if d is equal to 250, then let's make grow true. But for the, the reason I did it this way, where uh, I set it up so grow equals the opposite of what it currently is, right? Whatever grow is not, right? Um, is because uh, I want to use, I want to take this idea here and turn this into a brush. Um, I think the sizes that I have everything starting uh, off with are, are too big for this, but we'll, we'll deal with that in a second. Um, because what I'd like to do is be able to draw the very beginning of the first tutorial, we, we were set up with the basic uh, processing sketch where I could move my mouse around and, uh, and it would drag a circle and it would just draw a screen. Well, I want to have some control over that. I, want to, I do want to draw like that, but I want to draw in certain places and then I want to stop drawing. So I can move my mouse to another location and start uh, drawing again. So to do this, what we need is an event. So this is, we, we've got a function for the setup and we've got a function for the draw and it has all this stuff. But if we go to the reference, you know, we've looked at the reference for shape. Uh, we started looking at some of these circles and, and things like that. Um, but there's this special thing called events. Um, and uh, let's do, so there's key pressed and key released. Now, key pressed might seem like the right one. If I press this key, um, then make this thing false or make this thing true. The problem with pressed, oh, excuse me, is um, it's late at night here, I'm yawning. <laughs> uh, the problem with pressed is, you know, if I press on the key, like when do I stop pressing on it, right? It doesn't record it just at the, at the beginning. Um, uh, it uh, and there's some other uh, options in here we, we could use, but I'm going to use key released, right? So this will record the exact moment I let go of a key, right? And and then it will execute whatever code is inside of this. So uh, in this example here, um, in fact, uh, in, in the reference for uh, P5, it's all JavaScript, right? It's all embedded in here, so I can actually go in and edit this if I wanted to. Uh, and I'm just going to space it out, right? And I could delete whatever's in here and, and put new things. I could uh, edit some of these. I could even type new code, right? Let grow yeah, equal true. Like whatever it is that I, I wanted to use. But um, you can see here we have uh, this function is actually outside of the draw, right? There's the opening and closing brackets, right? That, that end this function. So we need a new function. And um, so we just, in fact, I'll just copy that right there, use it. So I'm going to get rid of this print for now and just going to kind of clean up the code a little, make it nice and tidy. So we have the setup that begins and then we have the draw. And then but outside of the draw, this is important. We don't want to, we don't want to put this function inside this function. This needs to be out on its own. Function key pressed, and uh, and then we can put our code in here, like whatever that's going to be. And these events that get uh, called out, uh, reset. Uh, these events that get called out. Let's go back one. Uh, some people call these like listening events, right? They're outside the program looking towards the user, if you want to think of it that way, and waiting for the user maybe to do something. And if the user does something, uh, it looks at the code that's in here and it notifies the rest of the program, hey, something has happened outside of our little virtual world uh, and with the user and the user now wants us to make some changes and I'm going to pass along the code that, uh, 
that I want you to use here, right? So, um, sorry, this little analogy reminds me of like Tron when I saw it in uh, 1982, um, the users in the computer programs. Um, so inside of this, what I would like to do is if the key pressed, um, I would like to do something. So I'm gonna create another variable and let's just call this let paint. And let's say paint is false to start, right? And then what we'll do is use one more if statement that says if paint, and this time I'm gonna use the shorthand, which just says, if I say, oops, if I say if paint, this is like if paint is true, right? This is the same as saying if it equals true, if I just type it out. So if paint, let's go ahead and draw this circle. And down here at the bottom, so if I, if I run this, what you'll see is nothing happens, right? Because right now paint is false. And if it's true, which is not, it's going to draw the circle. And it's not, right? Because it's, it's false. So what I can do is just say when I release the key, any key at this point, I'm going to say paint equals whatever paint is not. And the nice thing about this is it will toggle it on and off. So I can press a key to turn it on, sorry, press and release a key, and I can press and release a key to turn it back on, or to turn it back off, right? So um, now there's uh, one little, I'm gonna, I don't know if you can hear me, I'm tapping on my key there. It does, well, let me reset this here so I can make my point here. I'm tapping on my key, maybe you can hear this. Um, uh, and I don't actually know the answer to this, if the browser has to be clicked live or the canvas has to be made active or whatever. But right now it's not registering. But as soon as the program starts, if I click in the screen and then I start tapping, then it will go ahead and um, make it appear and then we'll take it so it uh, disappears. So let's go back and finish the rest of the code. So this uh, makes sense as a brush. So let's say this is going to be next to a mouse X. And we'll do, oops, that's why. And uh, let's start with this being a little bit smaller. So let's make this um, 50 and then I guess, so that'll be its small size and let's make it 100, um, maybe 125. Do, 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 do. Okay, so I press play, nothing's happening. I'm gonna draw towards the center of the screen. So I've clicked in the screen so that the, the program's active. I guess that's the way it works. And then I'm gonna hit D and you can see that uh, it's now moving and I can draw in there, but I, uh, I forgot one last thing, right? Because before we didn't want the background, um, or we didn't want the circle to just repeat on itself, but now we do. So let's go ahead and put the background. Oops, uh, there we go. We want it in a setup, so it just happens at the very beginning. So click, tap a thing, and there we go. Right, so I'm making my little careful drawing. And it's interesting because the grow is still working, right? So I'm still getting this kind of gnarly little pattern. And, there, I'm gonna just stop for a second. I hit a D key, and I'm gonna move my cursor somewhere else, and I'll tap a key again. Again, it doesn't matter at this point, it just says if a key, any of them, is released, I'm going to tell paint to be the opposite of whatever it currently is, right? Okay. So this is the start of something, right? I can turn this on and off. So many different things could happen in here, right? Um, in fact, I'll save that for another tutorial, right? But inside that key release, um, I could maybe set a variable that has a color, but we haven't talked about that really in class yet. Maybe even uh, fancier would be, what if I said, well, in fact, I'm gonna leave this. I'll leave this right here. So right now we have 50 and 125. It's kind of the minimum and the maximum size for the grow. So coding challenge and the uh, language of the coding train with the wonderful Dan Schiffman <laughs> on YouTube. Um, so coding challenge, uh, see if you can do this so that when you press the key and toggle it on and off, you randomly um, give it new um, values 
for the min and the max size, right? So that every time you put down, you start to draw something like this, you would get a different um, range of sizes that the brush could be. Okay, so let's just uh, recap here. I've added another variable, um, again, a Boolean called paint. It could have been named anything, right? I could have called it um, magic marker or whatever I wanted it to be. Um, and I've used that in an if statement just on the stuff that I'm drawing, right? Just on the circle. I've left the um, grow here, right? Because I want the circle to get bigger and smaller, but then I only I want to be able to control where the painting is happening. And I'm toggling this variable by using an event. And that event is its own function down here called key released. There are others. There's also ways that I can assign a key so I can have maybe different brushes that I want to use. Maybe I could have paint brush one, paint brush two. But I think we'll look at that next time in class and then follow up with the tutorial. Okay, happy coding.